Hello, beloved, and welcome to our online worship. Let's take a moment to gather our hearts in prayer. Accept our praise, God of justice, defender of the oppressed. Give us grace to join in this your holy work, that all the world may see your glory through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen.
Let us pray. Stir up, O Lord, the wills of your faithful people, that richly bearing the fruit of good works, we may by you be richly rewarded through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. A reading from the book of Exodus. The Lord said to Moses and Aaron in the land of Egypt, this month shall mark for you the beginning of months. It shall be the first month of the year for you. Tell the whole congregation of Egypt that on the 10th of this month, they are to take a lamb for each family, a lamb for each household. If a household is too small for a whole lamb, it shall join its closest neighbor in obtaining one. The lamb shall be divided in proportion to the number of people who eat it. Your lamb shall be without blemish, a year old male. You may take it from the sheep or from the goats. You shall keep it until the 14th day of this month. Then the whole assembled congregation of Israel shall slaughter it at twilight. They shall take some of the blood and put it on the two doorposts and the lintel of the houses in which they eat it. They shall eat the lamb that same night. They shall eat it roasted over the fire with unleavened bread and bitter herbs. Do not eat it raw or boiled in water, but roasted over the fire with its head, legs, and inner organs. You shall, you shall let none of it remain until morning. Anything that remains until morning you shall burn. This is how you shall eat it. Your loins girded, your sandals on your feet, and your staff in your hand. And you shall eat it hurriedly. It is the Passover of the Lord. For I will pass through the land of Egypt that night, and I will strike down every firstborn in the land of Egypt, both human beings and animals. On all the gods of Egypt, I will execute judgments. I am the Lord. The blood shall be a sign for you on the houses where you live. When I see the blood, I will pass over you, and no plague shall destroy you when I strike the land of Egypt. This day shall be a day of remembrance for you. You shall celebrate it as a festival to the Lord. Throughout your generations, you shall observe it as a perpetual ordinance. Hear what the Spirit is saying to the church. Thanks be to God.
A reading from the letter of Paul to the Romans. Owe no one anything except to love one another, for the one who loves another has fulfilled the law. The commandments, you shall not commit adultery, you shall not murder, you shall not steal, you shall not covet, and any other commandment are summed up in the word, love your neighbor as yourself. Love does no wrong to a neighbor, therefore. Love is the fulfilling of the law. Besides this, you know what time it is, how it is now the moment for you to wake from sleep. For salvation is nearer to us now than when we became believers. The night is far gone, the day is near. Let us then lay aside the works of darkness and put on the armor of light. Let us live honorably as in the day, not in reveling and drunkenness, not in debauchery and licentiousness, not in quarreling and jealousy. Instead, put on the Lord Jesus Christ and make no provision for the flesh to gratify its desires. Hear what the Spirit is saying to the church. Thanks be to God. The Lord be with you and with thy spirit. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to St. Matthew. Jesus said, if another member of the church sins against you, go and point out the fault when the two of you are alone. And if the member listens to you, you have regained that one. But if you are not listened to, take one or two others with you, so that every word may be confirmed by the evidence of two or three witnesses. If the member refuses to listen to them, tell it to the church. And if the offender refuses to listen even to the church, let such a one be to you as a Gentile and a tax collector. Truly I tell you, whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven and whatever you loose on earth will be loosed in heaven. And again, truly, I tell you, if two of you agree on earth about anything, it will be done for you by my Father in heaven. For where two or three are gathered in my name, I am there among them. The Gospel of Christ. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. I speak to you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Nothing is working. Nothing is working. I've heard this refrain throughout this past week and over the last months. But with God, everything is possible. And through the community of faith, we can come to make things possible together. This refrain of nothing is working, it, it happens on so many levels in our society. You know, whether it's the bank messing up your bank statement, putting money in the wrong account, um, executors of wills telling me the bank has messed up yet again a scandal at the federal level, uh, oppression in Belarus and uh, discontent and problems uh, in Hong Kong and throughout the world, there's so much suffering. Nothing seems to be working. People telling me, I, 
I had a small accident with my car and the woman was so angry with me. She wanted to take me to court and make sure that I never drove again. Things like this, you know, uh, my parents are elderly. I can't visit them in the hospital. My, my wife is dying. I, I, her sisters can't visit her. Things like this. There are so many things that are very difficult because of the pandemic. Clergy only allowed to visit in the hospital once just to do prayers for the dying, the last rites. It's been frustrating on so many levels. It's like trying to walk through a door and it looks like it's clear, but when you get there, there's a plastic film and you kind of have to push through to get there. People losing their temper in the supermarket for no reason. And yet, God is a God of deliverance. God is a God of freedom. God is a God of love. And it is through the expression of love that we are called to build up the community of faith. We have so many challenges, all the little things that we used to do that made it possible for people to know what was going on in each other's lives because we're not meeting face to face, it's hard. And people are struggling. But God is a God of deliverance. And this too shall pass. God is a God of deliverance. In the Hebrew scriptures that we heard read today, from the book of Exodus, we hear this verse, On all the gods of Egypt I will execute judgments. God is a God of deliverance. There's been a whole process to get to this point. Moses and Aaron have tried to negotiate with Pharaoh ten times. This, the, the tenth plague is the last one. God has tried to ratchet up the pressure on Pharaoh, who represents the gods of Egypt, these false gods, gods' forces which oppress the people, forces which corrupt and pollute creation. God is a God of deliverance, and God delivers the people of Israel. And that is celebrated every year at the Passover. That God is a God of deliverance, but the deliverance comes at a great price. The hardness of heart of Pharaoh costs him greatly. The firstborn and we think, oh, that's so harsh. But remember, God has been sending in his negotiators and Pharaoh would not negotiate. So what do you do when you come against the authorities which will not change? Authorities which corrupt, which hurt, which oppress. What do we do when we think of the Indian Act? It's time for a change. It's time for the Truth and Reconciliation Commission statements of the things that we need to do as a, as a, as a society. They need to be followed. We are all treaty people. Black Lives Matter. Forces which hurt other people. Let's think about that. God is a God of deliverance and God is a God of love. What do the scriptures say? Love one another. Love is patient, love is kind, love is understanding. It doesn't insist on its own way. It's time for a change. And this whole pandemic has forced us to take a good hard look at ourselves. How are we involved in unjust structures? How are we involved in 
the forces which, which hurt others, we don't mean to be involved in that. I'm not saying anyone's intentional about it. But we've been learning that people suffer because of our actions, because of our inactions. There's a process for negotiation. There's a process to bring about peace. There's a process to bring about prosperity. And the pandemic has opened our eyes to all kinds of problems. Problems in nursing homes, problems um, in the economy, problems at the political level of the world. All levels of government are struggling with this, federal, provincial, and municipal. And we are all part of the solution. In the gospel for today, Jesus has just told a parable about the lost sheep. When one sheep gets lost, he says, doesn't the shepherd go and search for the one that went astray? And if he finds it, doesn't he rejoice over it more than the 99 that never went astray? How do we care for one another in the midst of community? How do we love one another in the midst of a pandemic? St. Paul says, love is the fulfilling of the law. All of these commandments owe no one anything except to love one another, for the one who loves an another has fulfilled the law. All the commandments are summed up in this, love your neighbor as yourself. Love does no wrong to a neighbor, therefore love is the fulfilling of the law. Besides this, you know what time it is. How now is the time to wake from sleep. It's time to wake up and smell the coffee that it's time for a change. You know, justice requires mercy. Salvation is nearer to us now than when we became believers. It's the dawn of a new time. Every difficulty, every great challenge can be an opportunity for us to grow as individuals and for us to grow as a community. Because the Spirit is with us. When you heard the Gospel for today, did you hear how many times the word listen came about, how the world would be different if we would just listen to each other. We start with their conclusion. This is what I think we should do. We don't start with how we got to that point and how would our conflicts at various levels change if we could simply listen to each other. How did you reach that conclusion? Genuine listening. Why do you believe the things you do? Tell me more about that. Because the Spirit is with us. And how will conversations change if we simply acknowledge the presence of the one who creates, redeems, and sustains us, the Father, the Christ, and the Holy Spirit with us? How will conversations between uh, partners, marriage partners or otherwise, how will they change if they simply recognize that Jesus is among them? And it's not just a dialogue, it's a trialogue. Three husband, wife, Christ. How will difficulties change if we acknowledge that each person is a precious child of God. How would we change? Would we not accept things at a political level? You know, the pharaohs of this world who refuse to accept the will of the people will learn that God is the Lord. To all the dictators in the world, you need to remember 
all of us go down to the dust. And one day you will be buried. How do you want to be remembered? Will you be remembered as Pharaoh was remembered? As one who was hard of heart? Or will you be remembered as one who loved and accept the fact that we all make mistakes? So in the church, how should a member who has strayed, that is sinned, be treated? That's what that gospel is all about. First, there's the parable of the lost sheep. And the shepherd goes and finds the lost sheep. And how do we treat someone who has strayed? Someone made a mistake. Our brother, our sister. How do we treat each other? You know, at one point it says, if the offender refuses to listen, even to the church, consider that person an unworthy outsider. But remember who's writing the gospel. A tax collector. Matthew himself was an unworthy outsider. And so justice needs to be tempered with mercy. But justice needs to be done. Because with no justice, there is no peace. And so we strive to create a, a just society in this country. We strive to create a just and open community where everyone is precious and everyone's gifts are cherished. And in the midst of a pandemic, yes, it is hard to see our brothers and sisters when they're not physically present with us, but we do have other means. We can phone, we can send a card, we can send a letter, we can reach out to each other through our small groups. We have so many blessings to share. So share those blessings. Love is the fulfilling of the law. Our God is a God of deliverance. So may we live it. Amen. God calls us to be open to the word and to one another. Let us open ourselves to the world in prayer. We thank God for the gifts of creation, for the breath of winds, the racing clouds, the rhythm of seasons, and the wonder of stars. 
for times of relaxation and recreation. For these and all your gifts, we give you thanks. For the Holy Church of God throughout the world, that the Lord may confirm it in faith, sustain it in hope, and deepen its communion and charity. We pray for our bishops and our clergy here at St. Luke's. Let us pray to the Lord. For this community gathered to celebrate the Eucharist, in communion with the Church in heaven and throughout the world, that by the word of truth and the bread of life, we may bear witness in our own generation to the timeless gospel of Christ. Let us pray to the Lord. For people throughout the world who are suffering from drought, famine, and disease, from economic distress and social disruption, from violence and war. Today we remember especially the people of Belarus, the US, Iran, and all those suffering from COVID-19. Let us pray to the Lord. We pray for those whose lives are overshadowed by physical pain or anguish of spirit, for those known to us and those on our parish list. May they know the healing touch of Christ. As we feel a little of autumn in the air, we pray for the homeless of our city and for those neglected by society. Grant them a nearness to you. Let us pray to the Lord. As farmers continue to harvest their crops, we pray for seasonable weather, reliable equipment, and healthy crops. For students and teachers, many who returned to school this past week, may they be ready to face all of the new challenges that a pandemic brings. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, teach us how to stand still to switch off, to lean on a gate, to sit and look at our beautiful world. Teach us how to turn off the phone and to relax without feeling that we should be doing something. Teach us to stop and look and listen, to be still in mind when we stop, to see beauty when we look, to hear more when we listen. Let us pray to the Lord. O God, who brought us from the rest of last night to the light of this new day, bring us into the light, to the guiding light of the eternal. Lead us, O God, on the journey of justice. Guide us in the pathways of peace. Renew us, O God, by the wellspring of grace. Today, tonight, and forever. Amen. Let us humbly confess our sins to Almighty God. Almighty God, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, maker of all things and judge of all people, we acknowledge and confess our manifold sins and wickedness, which we from time to time most grievously have committed, by thought, word, and deed, against thy divine majesty. We do earnestly repent, and are heartily sorry for these our misdoings. Have mercy upon us, most merciful Father, for thy Son, our Lord Jesus Christ's sake. Forgive us all that is past, and grant that ever hereafter we may serve and please thee in newness of life, to the honor and glory of thy name, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, who has great mercy has promised forgiveness of sins to all them that with heart to repentance and true faith to unto of him, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and bring you to everlasting life. Through Jesus Christ.
peace of the Lord be always with you. And with God's spirit. spirit. Let's exchange a sign. Let us pray. Great and holy God, accept our offering of labor and love. May we bring you true and spiritual worship and be one with you. We ask this in the name of Jesus Christ, the Lord. Amen. The Lord be
to thee, O Lord our God, who didst make us in thine own image, and of thy tender mercy didst give thine only Son, Jesus Christ, to take our nature upon him, and to suffer death upon the cross for our redemption. He made there a full and perfect sacrifice for the whole world, and did institute and in his holy gospel command us to continue a perpetual memorial of that his precious death and sacrifice until his coming again. When the same night that he was betrayed, took bread, and when he had given thanks to thee, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Likewise, after supper, he took the cup, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the remission of sins. Do this as oft as you shall drink it in remembrance of me. Wherefore, O Lord and Heavenly Father, we thy people do celebrate and make with thee thy holy gifts, these thy holy gifts which we now offer unto thee. The memorial of thy Son hath commanded us to make, having in remembrance his blessed passion and precious death, his mighty resurrection and glorious ascension, and looking for his coming again with power and great glory. And we most humbly beseech thee, O merciful Father, to hear us, and with thy word and Holy Spirit, to bless and sanctify these gifts of bread and wine, that they may be unto us the body and blood of thy dearly beloved Son, Jesus Christ. We praise thee, we bless thee, we thank thee, and we pray to thee, Lord our God. And we earnestly desire thy fatherly goodness to accept this our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, whereby we offer and present unto thee, O Lord, ourselves, our souls, and bodies. Grant, we beseech thee, that all who partake of this holy communion may worthily receive the most precious body and blood of thy Son, Jesus Christ, and be filled with thy grace and heavenly benediction, and also that we and all thy whole church may be made one body with him, that he may dwell in us and we in him, through the same Jesus Christ, our Lord, by whom and with whom, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all who honor and glory be unto thee, O Father Almighty, world without end. Amen. And now as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. We do not presume to come on this side table, O merciful Lord, trusting in our own righteousness, but in thy manifold and great mercies. We are not worthy so much as to gather up the crumbs under thy table, but thou art the same Lord, whose property is always without mercy. Grant us therefore, gracious Lord, so to eat the flesh of thy dear Son, Jesus Christ, and to drink his blood, that we may evermore dwell in him, and he in us. Amen.
These are the gifts of God for the people of God. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Receive the body of Christ. Become who you are. body of Christ broken for you. Loving Father, your word and sacrament give us food and life. May we who have shared in holy things bear fruit to your honor and glory. In the name of Jesus Christ, the Lord. Amen. Glory to God, whose power working in us can do infinitely more than we can ask or imagine. Glory to God from generation to generation, in the Church and in Christ Jesus, forever and ever. Amen. May the peace of God, which passeth all understanding, keep your hearts and minds and the knowledge and love of God, and of His Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. And may the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be amongst you, remain with you, strengthen and encourage you this day and always.